were your what were your biggest takeaways from what sounded like like kind of what we expected, right? I mean, Ryan Kelly said after the game, don't read too much into too much of this because like what the defense played two two, I think it was two different bases, yeah, uh, right. one coverage. No, it's it's a physical thing. Who's winning the physical one on one? That's exactly right. So when you have that situation, a lot of people say, well, what are you really going to find out? Here's what you'll find out if you're playing like base offense and base defense. It's the individual matchups to T Bob's point. So what do you start to look for? Well, you look at, okay, receiver corner battles, okay? Who wins those one-on-one battles? You certainly watch, like for me, I was on the sideline doing the radio call. I was locked into Will Campbell versus B.J. Ojolari. Like that's what I, because yeah. like no matter what defense you're running, like he's still rushing and you've got to stop him from getting to the quarterback. So those are some of the things I was paying attention to. But if you're asking me like what was the biggest standout from the game, I think the, it's a three-quarterback battle narrative is real. Yeah, that's what I heard. Garrett Nussmeyer is firmly in this battle. It is Daniels, Brennan, and Nussmeyer. He is, over the last couple of weeks in spring practice, you've heard that, and it's been true. And he kind of showed why, I think, on Saturday. And I know it was a spring game, but I'm just talking about like going to practice and being out there and seeing him. I think he's done a really nice job of he is still the gunslinger that everybody tabbed him to be, but you can be a gunslinger and still play smart football. Huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't yeah, have to be sure. a gunslinger that, oh, man, he makes the great plays, but he has a lot of turnovers as well. It really feels like he's been coached up by Sloan and others, obviously, to not try to force the issue, but still have the, you know, the, the mentality and still have the belief that he can go out there and make plays without trying to force it. And it's very hard to do, but he feels like he is firmly in this quarterback battle well, and, now. And, and we kind of forget, yes, he is a gunslinger, and I get it. And a lot of that comes from how he carries himself, right? Yeah. I mean, we've said it since day one. And I, I mean that in a positive way. He is a um, – he's a he's a little S-H-I-T. Just like, he, you know, it's like like from day one, he believed in himself uh, fully and wholly. And even as a freshman last year, you know, and it, you know, he'd have his like shirt untucked and his like Jersey tucked up under the pads. Yeah. And that's good. Like, that's what I need out of my quarterback. I need that next level confidence. So, but what gets lost, I think in that is you make a lot of assumptions because of maybe that, that, that attitude and kind of swag that he carries himself with. He is a quarterback coach's son at the end of the day, yeah. you know, like, so this idea that, yeah, he can refine himself and become a smarter quarterback first should not be that surprising when you actually dive into his past. Yeah, and when you kind of look at what this offense wants to be, like we've talked about Jaden Daniels and his ability to be mobile and to move around because we can kind of compare him to Desmond Ritter because obviously when when you start you know having the comparison, Denbrock and that's his last quarterback and they had a lot of success together, I said this on the radio, Garrett Nussmeyer kind of reminds me of Ian Book when he was at Notre Dame with Brian Kelly. Mm. And Book was a great college player. And he was. he's a fourth-round selection to the Saints, obviously. And, like, we know him, like, for the game he started for the Saints. But go back and look at his college football career. I mean, he had a really nice career. And it's a comp for me for a Nussmeyer. They kind of have a lot of the same skill set. Remember, Book was the guy that could kind of make a play out of nothing. He was, you know, maybe his best when he was on the move. And I go back to that bowl game against LSU and Orlando when he came in it was a different offense and he's got a little bit of that to him and so it's a quarterback and a skill set that Brian Kelly has had a lot of success with before so if um and maybe last one of the quarterbacks and then you pick your brain about some other stuff uh I'll read this comment right here from Corlin Jacob because this is what uh, been has been brought up to me a lot um the downside of us winning the job is that you would lose half the QBs to the point. whoever wins the job that's a possibility for the most part. Yeah, I guess you're right. You know what I mean? Because I guess the only – Well, and actually, Jaden can't, though, right? right? I'm saying he'd be the only – like, But he can't transfer because he just used the transfer portal. Right, that's what I'm saying. Oh, but I'm yeah. saying, like, you're still going to lose somebody. Yes, like, like, like you could lose Nuss. If whoever – almost like whoever wins the job. Like, if Miles won it, do you lose Nuss? If Nuss wins it, do you lose Miles? If Jaden wins it, do you lose two quarterbacks? Do you lose Miles and Nuss? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it that that part of it in this day and age of college football, that's inevitable. That that's going to happen. It is what it is. And that's why you have a surplus. You, you have you have a surplus now, and you're not going to have it in the fall. Yeah. Like you know that at this day in April, you know that that's going to happen. So that's all, why you have to have four. Like you have to have four in spring football now because you know you're po- probably going to lose two. Almost you like for to, sure you, one. You it, guaranteed. Like an absolute, yeah. you're going to lose. <laughs> You're going to lose one. And it'll be interesting to see how long they not draw this out to try to save one of those quarterbacks. 
But going into August, what's the plan? When do we want to narrow from three to two? When do we want to go from two to one? So um, in evaluating their play, which again, you know, it's it's a light mental day for quarterbacks. We don't read too much in it. Do, do, you just think they all kind of three. What I've also heard is that, you know, nobody really stood out above the others. You know, maybe like Brennan had the highest completion percentage. Right. They, they the all yards. Right. Daniels ran the best. So they, they had their moments. But the point is, like Nussmeyer showed you that it's not a two quarterback competition. Yes. It's a three quarterback competition. As far as poise, I thought Miles probably had the most poise. Yeah. You could tell like when he was out there and leading the team. Like it, it was very efficient, and the offense really was clicking, and they were doing what they were supposed to be doing, right? And of course, like Jaden, like his first, the first play of the game, it's a pass play, nobody's open, kind of breaks down a little bit, and he scampers for like twelve yards. Like yeah. okay, like that's that's something that he can bring to the table. So honestly, like I thought the quarterbacks all had moments. Now Walker ha- Walker Howard did have a long touchdown pass. He didn't get as much play as the others, so we didn't get a full chance to really see him but obviously like we've seen enough and is leading up to this to know that he's going to be a guy but how'd our king will campbell do he's a stud man locking him up he, he's the stud. i mean think about going against one of the better rushers in all of the sec right and you didn't notice it that that that's yeah. always a telltale sign yes. you know what i'm saying like we're not coming on here saying this rusher went off this rusher went off now, the defensive tackles probably play better than the ends, but again, that's probably because of guys like Will Campbell. So one of my buddies was laughing because he was like, you know what's crazy? Like, I don't know anybody on this team right now. Like, I didn't remember. Who's who's Fonz Murray in the offense? He is a transfer from Georgetown. Playing left tackle? He's, yeah, he's from New Orleans. Went to Jesuit uh, transfer from uh, Georgetown. My dog, dude. A new 5-3 on the O-line. Kind of looks like you a little bit. Well, it did look like you. That's what <laughs> I was just thinking, like dude. <laughs> Winning the SEC, no doubt, dude. Count it. Uh, LSU going to win. Anything else stand out? I thought the How running. the cornerbacks do? Dude, I thought they held their own. Okay. I mean, the receivers made some plays, but, they, dude, they're down so many bodies. I thought they held their own at moments in the spring game, which is good to see. I, I will say the other thing that stood out to me was the running backs. The running backs, I thought, played really, really well. Um, Armani Goodwin had a couple of bursts, and he's so explosive, man. Yeah. He is, if he can stay healthy, that's the When you're that explosive, T, and you know what I'm talking about, it's like hamstrings and, and calves, and it's just – by nature, you're so explosive that it is hard sometimes with those small tissue injuries that you have. But if he can stay healthy, uh, John Emery was limited action. But, man, in, that back, in, in, in the ones he had, I mean, he was physical. He hit the hole. I mean, one of the first plays, he finished somebody on the sideline. I thought it was a really nice job. Look at my boy 5'3". Run this back. Left tackle. Everyone, Everybody watch the left tackle right here. Look at him. Do, do an honor to the number. Uh, what I loved about Emery, too, Jake, is, uh, damn, finish him. What I love about Emory was the quote that he had where, you know, he he told Coach he wanted to play hurt yep. because he knows that during the regular season he will not be 100%, and he wants to know what that feels like. I thought that was – he just speaks all the leadership and everything that else that we've talked and, about. And his growth, man, and his growth. And, and hopefully we're trying to get it with the schedule and we'll have him on at some point tomorrow. He's going to try to come in. But just the growth, and it's kind of like we talk about with Tyron, like, when Tyron had his issues, there's a couple of ways to handle it. You can blame everybody else, and you can make up a, whatever narrative yeah. you want, or you can say, man, that's me. Like, I've got to change some things. I've got to be better. And now Tyron is literally like the standard of what you want to be, like yeah. the gold standard of what he does in the community, how he is as a teammate, all those things, right? And he doesn't run from I've told him. I've told him this many times. Like, man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that, and just it's not done. And John's kind of done – the same thing, but you know, speaking on the other running Ooh, backs, running I, I, I really thought like all of them had moments. Don't forget about Josh Williams either, man. The, the, he's, he's a kid that's going to play. He's like the steady Eddie in that room. Remember, he earned a scholarship last year, and, and Josh came in at times like when it was like a crucial third down, and you needed to know that he was going to pick up the blitz. Like last year, it was Josh Williams. Like yeah. he was that guy. He's going to have a role in this team. It's not going to be a huge role. It's not going to be a feature back. He will have a role on this team, and even he had some moments out of the backfield yesterday. So big day for the running backs, a group that's got a lot of talent, but now you kind of see uh, need to see it uh, come together. And by the way, Brian Balistra is your boy's name, 53, freshman, 6'4", 311 pounds. Wait, that was a freshman just now. Well, I think he's a retro retro freshman freshman, because still he was at Georgetown, transferred from Jesuit. Shout out to fighting Gordy Rushes. Bro, he was locking old boy up. And then you just put him in the ground. Looking good, dude. 5'3". I mean, 
Buy the jersey. <laughs> Uh, somebody, yeah, somebody bought the T-Bob jersey. Yes, bought a used out. T-Bob 07 I would, jersey. Dude, if I would have known that was in the gift shop, I would have had that. I believe it was. Um, oh, I want to give her a shout out. I'll find it in a second. Uh, by the way, uh, shout out to LSU Softball, who we probably should have mentioned in Weekend Winners, going to Athens and taking two or three. In a wild series, too. Over the 13th ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Yeah, it was a wild series. A lot of runs scored. <laughs> I mean, you had some wild, wild uh, plays in, in that series as well. I can't wait to talk with Coach Serena. But, like, even the game yesterday, you're, like, you're down 5 nothing. You come back, and, and you storm back, and you win. Yeah, shout-out to my girl, Rachel, who uh, bought a used uh, T-Bob Hebert jersey, which, well, no one's ever done. Uh, so it actually does mean <laughs> quite a bit. So thank you, Rachel. You're awesome. Um, all right, when we get back, you already know what time it is. It's Monday at 9 15, which means it's time for some spread lines with the people's jam. Hold the mail, keep it locked.